a recent video of the top 10 dumbest characters in One Piece, I briefly touched on the fact that there are many characters in the series who are selectively smart, in that in one specific area they'll be a genius, but otherwise they are dumb of ass. The Straw Hat Pirates themselves are excellent examples of this. Everybody in the crew, including the dumb ones, is at least a little bit smart, and everybody in the crew, including the indisputably smart ones, is at least a little bit dumb. I'm Dawn of the World, and originally this video was going to be shining a light on the entire crew, but that ended up being much longer than expected, and most of that was me talking about Luffy, so in this video I'm going to be highlighting the ways in which Luffy is a smart, dumb person, and in my next video I'll take the same idea and apply that to the crew as a whole. I don't think I've done a Luffy-centric video just yet, so let's get started. Luffy, as the protagonist, the driving force of One Piece, and the heart of the series is, as you would expect, dense. I don't even know where to begin with him. He's very impulsive, seeming to rely primarily on more instinct than logic, though at the same time still maintains some sort of logical code. While instinct over logic isn't inherently dumb, he likes to keep us guessing, and it's a bit of a mystery as to what goes on inside his head. He has a tendency to fail with going along with almost any plan, specifically anything involving Trafalgar Law comes to mind. And also that one part of Dressrosa when he's meant to be under the disguise of Lucy, but he keeps uh, slipping up. Though his tendency to not go along with a plan seems almost like a conscious decision to go about an option that will be the most fun and interesting rather than the most convenient. That being said, he can kind of go by a plan when needed. He seems to see the world in a very different way to others, and we see this from really early on in the series. One of the first times I remember laughing a lot during my first read of One Piece was just before the Syrup Village arc in the manga, which is actually just after the Syrup Village arc in the anime, when they visit Gaimon on his island of strange and unusual creatures. These creatures seem to be predominantly one kind of creature, but then they'll also have the traits of a second kind of creature. But the traits of the second type of creature are a lot less dominant than the first. They were kind of like smiles actually, now that I really think about it. Anyway, Luffy calls the animals by the recessive trait. Like he full on picks up a snake that has bunny ears and says, huh, this is a weird rabbit. And then he goes over to a pig that has a mane and is like, ooh, what a strange lion. We see this again later on during Alabasta, where Crocodile has them all locked away in a cell surrounded by banana gators and Luffy describes them as bananas with crocodiles growing out of them. And then Usopp just does his darnest to try and explain to Luffy that no, 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 they're crocodiles with bananas growing out of their head. And Luffy's like, ugh. Like he's trying to understand a really complex algebraic equation. But then again, maybe it's from the seawater that's entering the cell and weakening him. But hey, it might just be a bit of both. There's actually been a few scenes like that where Usopp really, really, really tries to make Luffy understand a very basic concept while everyone else just sees it as a lost cause. You gotta hand it to the guy for trying. Anyway, Luffy also has this superhuman inability to see through the most basic of disguises. Such examples include Foxy during the Davy Back fight and Caesar during Whole Cake Island, though to be fair Luffy actually did manage to see through that one, just. So maybe he's improving. But also when Caesar claimed not to be Caesar, he believed him right away. And then most iconically and most damningly, there's the case of not even being able to recognize his own best friend in a shoddy disguise. And I respect there can be a lot of different opinions on who Luffy's best friend is, whether he actually has one at all, or whether it could be everybody in the crew in some kind of way. But Luffy and Usopp just give me this really wholesome dumbass pair of friends energy. So it was heartbreaking to see those two fight in the way that they did back in Water 7, and then Usopp, fueled by a simultaneous crisis of identity and being too ashamed to show his face around Luffy and the crew, throws together this iconic number that a mere two people, who just so happen to be two of his closest friends, fall for. And I would almost be willing to say that Luffy's actually playing big brain here, and he's just pretending to not recognize Usopp 
Usopp, when deep down he actually did know it was him, were it not for one, his inability to lie, and two, one single scene. The scene in question is the one where Luffy lays nearing defeat at the hands of Rob Lucci towards the very end of Enna's lobby. For the first time in the arc, sorry second, he does so when he's speaking to the giants as well, Usopp removes the mask. He removes the persona of Soga King that he's been hiding behind all this time due to his own shame and feelings of incompetence and he finally addresses Luffy, his captain, his friend, not as Soga King but as Usopp for the first time since their fight and in doing so metaphorically and literally gets Luffy back onto his feet giving him the drive that he needs to end the battle and win. This is honestly one of my favourite moments in the entire series. Luffy and Usopp's friendship is so special to me as you can probably already tell and I could do a whole video on that one moment I think. But the thing that I want to point out from this scene is at the very start when Usopp appears to Luffy and Luffy just says Usopp you're here too? Despite, you know, standing side by side with him back there in that incredibly iconic scene and everything, this proves to me that he genuinely didn't know that Soga King was Usopp because why would he say you're here too during such a moment if it weren't genuine? I mean, Luffy can't lie after all. The implications for this are kind of hilarious because does it mean that Luffy and Chopper don't think that Usopp got a bounty until Dressrosa? And if the Marines are just as as dense as Luffy and Chopper, does it mean that possibly Usopp has two active bounty hosts right now, one for God Usopp and one for Soge King? I would love it if this issue was addressed at some point in the future and we get another nod to Soge King, though part of me actually likes to think that now, like as in post time skip, Luffy is kind of caught on to the fact that Usopp and Soge King are one in the same, like maybe sometime during the time skip he could have been casually talking to Rayleigh one evening and and Rayleigh was looking at the crew bounty posters and was like, ah oh, yes, and here's young Usopp as Soge King, blah, 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 blah. And Luffy's just like, wait, what? And then comes to this earth shattering revelation that only Chopper hasn't come to yet. And everyone else would just be like, yeah. Luffy makes a rich plethora of questionable decisions throughout the course of the series and also has this ability to literally turn off his own brain. He uses this while fighting Enel to prevent Enel from being able to effectively use his mantra, also known as observational haki. So really, Gomu Gomu no Baka, aka Head Empty, was actually quite big brain. You see, Luffy can be such a dumbass that he comes around full circle and lands in the realms of ingenuity, in which he has this sort of logic and intelligence that many much smarter characters don't possess. For one thing, there's his creativity and resourcefulness in battle. Head empty, thinking about using water and then blood in Alabasta, his fight against Katakuri, various other examples that currently elude me. And the thing is that he's never trying to be smart in these moments. It's just something he seems to possess on a primal and instinctive level. An instinctive level that also seems to make him particularly susceptible to hypnotic type abilities, such as those of Django and even Brooke. Where it really matters, he is phenomenal at reading people and understanding them, which is a major contributing factor to his ability to get pretty much anybody onto his side, including former enemies, which has been attributed as his most dangerous and powerful ability. He also understands more than people give him credit, a very notable example being during Enna's lobby, ironically when he's standing right next to Soga King, who he genuinely doesn't recognise, he looks at the flag of the world government and says, I understand very well who Robin's enemy is. And then we find out later on, of course, that this understanding comes from some past experience during childhood, which goes on to show a lot more hidden depth and perception than what he ever lets on. And yeah, maybe he doesn't understand the entire mechanics of the world government, like why, why would he? But he does understand that there are forces of good and evil in the world and that any one group, be it pirates, marines and otherwise, isn't inherently good or bad. He understands understands that the powers that be are corrupt and that they inhibit the freedom of everybody else. Another example of him being amazingly perceptive and intuitive is that moment during Alabasta where he gets real with Vivi and tells her that people die and it's foolish of her to put her own life on the line and expect everything to be okay when she should be relying on her friends. In a very Luffy way he's matured a bit as the series has gone on. These post time skip days he actually reads the paper because he understands how important it is as the person 
person who wants to become Pirate King to be aware of what's going on in the world around him. Case in point, pre-time skip he entered Sabaudi as the only supernova captain, unaware of who anybody else was, and now in Wano when Drake has gotten into a pinch, he's turned to Luffy for safety I guess, and when he's gone to introduce himself, Luffy said, I know who you are. Because my dude reads the paper these days. Also these days, while I don't have any examples that jump immediately to mind at this second, I know they are splashed throughout Whole Cake Island and Wano. Luffy plays the straight guy in joke setups more often than ever before. Like someone else will say something dumb and he'll be the one to react to them in a relatively reasonable way, like while still very much being Luffy. Ultimately, I feel like neither dumb nor smart are truly terms that can capture what Luffy is, because he's instinctive above everything else, which can manifest in dumb presenting ways as well as smart presenting ways. I wonder if this instinct, which manifests as a tendency to be susceptible to hypnosis and the like on one hand, but also to really understand the hearts of people, animals and other living beings on the other, has something to do with the voice of all things. Maybe this voice of all things needs a truly empty brain in order to have enough space to function. I guess this could possibly say a thing or two about Momo as well. Anyway, I look forward to covering the rest of the crew in an upcoming video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Dawn of the World and I will see you next time. Later guys.